Hello. Um, I am trying a slice, which I haven't made before. We've got um, my daughter and her partner coming for dinner tonight. And I'm also going away and I'm looking after the dog. So I thought I'd make this slice. I'm not sure how it's going to go down because it's actually a really healthy version of a chocolate caramel slice. Caramel slice, you need two tins of um, sweetened condensed milk. So this is a healthy option. I have made the base. And I'll show you that and, and talk you through that. And I'm going to do the middle section. And then obviously I'm going to do the chocolate um, afterwards. That just has to harden up a bit. So let's have a look at it. It's um, from a book or a collection called um, Sweet Nourish, um, which was written by Louise Keats. And she is Margaret Fulton's granddaughter. So let me come to my week. Actually in for tomorrow. And we'll just look through the recipe. So to start with, basically we're going to um, soak some peanuts. 260 grams of roasted, unsalted peanuts. All right, so you can get those. I just got Woolies brand. Cover with water and soak for two to three hours. I might have been two hours. Preheat my oven to 160. I'm actually going to lay it, you know, I'm going to put stuff on a baking tray. I'm going to, oh, and you've got a grease and line of tin. I'll show you, I'm not doing it in a tin like that. So um, I didn't put a bowl on the, on, the, on the lid. I just went with that baking tray that was ready to go in the oven and put 150 grams of, these are actually gluten-free, actually buy gluten-free oats. They come from America. Sorry about the food miles, but um, they are gluten-free. And 50 grams of pecans. The tips are they can be activated or whatever. Put them in the get together and you bake them in the oven for about 15 minutes until lightly roasted and then you set them aside to cool. Then this is making the base itself. You put in the cooled oats and peanuts, you blitz them so that they end up looking, looking like a little bit like a flour. Add in um, the medial dates and I think it's really important that you get the medial, medial I know, I can't looking at the word. Um, dates because they are nice and moist and they are caramelly. This is a caramel slice, okay? Desiccated coconut, I don't have desiccated coconut. I have flaked coconut. I put it in at this point because it's all going to be blitzed up and it was fine. One teaspoon of cinnamon, 60 grams of coconut oil. And I did not put the maple syrup in. I find a lot of things, I've actually got some list balls in the um, freezer and I'm struggling to eat them because they're too sweet. So um, I left out the maple syrup. You pop the lid on and you're going to blitz um, B6 for 10 seconds. And now I'm going to show you what I've actually done with that. Hold on. So I'm going to make them in little individual um, portions, if you like. So um, I have just put everything down. Um, just filled up, or not filled up, put a bit of a base in um, in these mini muffin tins, all right? And then it's just sitting in the fridge, just firming up a bit. So put so the back of the spoon, place into the fridge. Okay, so popping that back in the fridge. All right, and now it says, do not clean the mixing bowl. You've got to love that. We're going to put the drained peanuts in. So I have a, an old PM5. I had a couple of bowl and blade sets. I kept one of these without a lid. I love it because I use it for draining. But you can see those peanuts probably. They are roasted, but they're not salted. They're going in. I love my simmering basket. Um, it, it makes a great calendar. Really good for draining things. All right. So I've got the soaked and drained peanuts in there. I'll pop the lid on and the MC. 10 seconds, speed six. Not much point trying to talk over that. So it's asking me to scrape down the bowl. 
this is looking quite crumbly, smelling very peanutty. That's what I'm not sure how this is going to go down, but anyway, got to give these things a go. Pop the lid on. 10 seconds, speed seven. Show you what that looks like. All right, it's really beautiful golden colour. Let's scrape that down again. Got a feeling I might have to make the real thing for my daughter. Anyway, oh, hang on, back. 100 grams of petted meat all day. 60 grams of coconut cream. Whoops, nearly threw that everywhere. So I do use the iron brand and the rest of this, um, I will scrape out or put into the container and I will freeze so it's not wasted. We're actually heading away. So um, 30 grams of the coconut oil. And my coconut oil is still um, hard. It works fine with the base. Two grams. There we go. All right. And it's one teaspoon of natural vanilla. I don't actually have enough in here, but um, it will have to do. I bought some vanilla pods. So I'm going to make my own vanilla extract. So watch this space. It'll be happening. Okay. And 100 grams of bananas is another thing. I'm not quite sure how they're going to take this, but as I said, you've got to try these things. Put my lid on. 10 seconds, speed six. Little video here telling you how to scrape down the sides of the bowl, but I think we know how to do that. Oh my gosh. Looks amazing, but it does need some more processing. My dates are still obvious. That is not a good thing when you're just trying to Smuggle ingredients. You know, take up for them last week. Something. And my, my daughter's very suspicious of me. She said, what are you smuggling in here, Mum? Now, this day, prolong if necessary. So I'm going to have a look at it. Oh, gosh. I can smell a banana. I'm sure this is not going to go down well. Anyway, I'm going to taste some. You know what it tastes like. Hmm. You can taste a bit of banana. You can't really taste the peanut, so. So I'm going to actually blitz it, blitz it up a little bit longer. Give it another 10 seconds. So I can do that by just going back here. I've got 15 seconds, speed eight. I'm go I'll do another, another, another round, I think. And then it says it transfer the mixture onto the base. So I've got my little things out of the fridge. Oh, it's looking pretty good, I have to say. Um, there we go. Then I get a teaspoon. Put a little bit on top. Actually, very, very similar color to the base. Not quite sure how much I need in each of these. So we can pretty much fill it up because I've just got to put the chocolate on top afterwards. But I'll I'll be a little bit on the conservative side till I've filled them all up. 
And these are going to then sit in the fridge for a bit till they cool. Oh, they're not really not really hot, are they? But till they're a little bit firmer, they firm up. And I'm really hoping they're going to turn out well from here. So I made a lemony slice, a seriously lemony slice from Cookie Doo um, in the week. And I made them in these. We had friends coming for dinner. And um, John's not a big dessert guy, but he loves lemon. And um, they were a huge success. He said, no, he wouldn't have another one, but could he take one home with him? <laughs> uh, but I made them in these. And it just looks so professional. I'm not a fancy cook. I have to wash my fingers now. Um, not a fancy cook, but um, I thought they, they looked really good. I mean, you know, if there's an easy way to do this, so they look really professional, and you don't have to be super professional, that's good. Uh, so just talking about the chocolate. So what I will need to do is obviously wash the bowl. Let's turn this around. I'll have to do a bit of smoothing in a minute too. Um, so I'll have to wash the bowl and I need to dry it. And I'm sure you're aware that if there's the slightest bit of water in, um, in the bowl, the chocolate will not, it just goes hard. I've forgotten that I think there's a proper term for it, but it just goes hard and it won't melt properly. So the trick with that is to wash and dry it and then turbo remembering that you need to get out of the mode for the lid to, to um, open up and dry your bowl again, and then put it on and turbo again. So what the turbo does is even though you've dried your bowl, you'll still have a bit of water around the, um, around the blade. Uh, I do it twice because I, I find that I still often get a little bit of water flicked off. Um, when I do it the second time. So, as I said, just repeat this, um, wash and dry your bowl, then turbo, um, dry it, and then turbo again. All right, that will give you a super clean bowl. And we'll just have a quick look at the preview. The clean and dry mixing bowl, 150 grams of dark chocolate broken into pieces. And you always lift up that chocolate because it makes it easier to melt, all right? And it will melt more quickly. So um, always lift it up first. Scrape down the side. Three teaspoons of grapeseed oil. This is just to make it a bit more spreadable. Pop the lid on. It's going to melt for three minutes, 60 degrees, speed one. And then you're going to smooth um, the chocolate over the top of all of these. So I'm sort of... I guess the idea would be if they're filled up to just underneath the rim so that when the chocolate goes in, um, it fills up the, um, the little cup and makes the right shape. So there we go. I'm still going with this. You don't need to hang around. But um, I will take a picture. I will post them and I'll let you know what the reaction is. So um, I think they're really good and they're a great healthy option. Um, but I know not everybody in my family feels the same way. So we'll see what happens.